Positivity is key. Yeah? People staying positive at least, yeah. right? Yeah. Trying to. Welcome back to another video. <laughs> What's going on everyone? Welcome back to another video. I'm here today with my good friend Gray. This is Gray, what's up? <laughs> and yeah, he recently came back to Chengdu where he's originally from after studying and working in Canada, Vancouver for the last eight years. So I'm just gonna pick his brain and ask him a few questions about how he sees life in China and you know, what his hopes are as a young Chinese person for, for China's future. Let's go. All right, bro. So the first thing I wanna ask you is like, um, what's the best thing about you know, living in China, life in China? I would say life is a lot more convenient compared to my life in Canada. Convenient? Convenient, yes. Like in what way? Like, give me some examples, bro. Like, first, like, um, transportation. Yeah. It's like, when, when I live in Canada, I have to drive every day to get the- Drive place. everywhere, yeah? Everywhere. But okay. right now, like, I, I'd rather take uh, metros and buses because it's so convenient. You can and the bicycles, bicycles right, are right, quite, you yeah, know, yeah. popular here, right? That's right. And what uh, else is like online different? Shopping. Online shopping. <laughs> online shopping, Taobao, you know shout, what I mean? Shout out to Taobao. Yeah. And so it's quick, isn't it? It's quick, it's cheap, it's a lot of options online. Yup. You know? So, and there's a lot of promotions um, from time to time. So like, like 11, 11. 11, 11 and 12, 12, like, with numbers, festival, yeah, yeah, yeah. shopping festivals with numbers. There's one coming up, 12 12. 12 right? 12, yeah. It was cheaper here that, you know, after living in, in Canada for like eight years, you yeah. thought, wow, like it's a big difference. So for the life expense, yeah. uh, the, the price in Chengdu is a lot cheaper compared in Canada. Like like what? Like restaurants, um, yeah. taxes, yeah. and um, renting stuff. Like house renting and house stuff. renting, okay. yeah, it's a lot cheaper. Okay. I had a dinner with my friend, like eight people at Hot Pot. How much? It's how much like did you pay? Ten, uh, one thousand kwai for eight people. Which is how much in Canadian dollars for our Canadian subscribers? If we got anything, twenty, two hundred, two hundred, two hundred dollars. dollars. But if I had so like how many people? Eight, eight people. people. Damn. With drinks and Hot Pot. Whereas in Canada, you, you got Hot Pot restaurants in Vancouver, right? For eight people, it should, huh? should be uh, six hundred Canadian dollars. So three times more expensive. So you miss the cheap yeah, and, and cheerful yeah, lifestyle, right. right? Yeah, that's it. How is job hunting in China for a young Chinese person like yourself? Well, speak of that, that's why I went to uh, Canada yeah. for a uh, foreign degree. So foreign the, education. Foreign yeah. education. So yeah. I could be more uh, competitive um, at the uh, uh, working field. Okay, so so like when you come back to China basically, right? Yeah, right. So okay. yeah, because um, China is developing so fast yep. and um, there's a large population. So I need, I need to get a higher degree and or foreign degree to get to be more competitive. So because of the competition basically. Right, yeah. It's exactly the same in the school that I work at. The, mm -hmm. the Chinese people who went abroad to study make a lot more money than the, the ones who studied in a, in a local university. Right, yeah. What else has like uh, affected y your job hunting now, like in China, for example? Right now, because of the virus yeah. still, so yeah. the economy got uh, affected a lot. Okay. In, like the general China. Okay. So, like in, in what way has it affected you? So it's like, uh, affect me, so it's like um, the business, either they are like uh, standing at the original place yeah. or they are just uh, cutting off people. Okay, right. so letting people go basically. Right, yeah. So like before the business, the companies are all like expanding the yep. business, but right now they're just shrinking right now. So, okay. So like the, the job opportunities they offered are like, reduced a lot. So what's really um, changed in China since you first left in 2014? Well, I feel people in Chengdu at least are more open-minded now regarding like to the uh, LGBTQ group. Okay. People are more friendly to the foreigners. Yeah. We can see a lot of uh, foreign and local couples right yeah. now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. In a Chengdu. More, in right? Chengdu, there's loads. That's right. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That's right. And and in in terms of like LGBTQ. Like I, I know there's loads of bars and clubs yeah. and people people look very friendly and accepting to them like, in this city. No matter right? for the older generation or my generation or younger generation, yeah. there's more acceptance. Okay. And uh, I personally Stop. I have a lot of uh, gay friend or lesbian friend. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. Now, same, same as me and Erin, like we have uh, 
you know loads of friends who who are LGBTQ and right. and we see that all of them are quite happy in Chengdu. Yeah, you and know? people support them like even online. Like you can see the review, uh, the views yeah. or the comments. People are supporting them. Yeah, it's it's yeah. quite it's quite an inclusive city. I, I think I think this is why like I've. I've had fun and I wanted to to stay in Chengdu for so long and I didn't go to another city. Yeah. Because it's it's quite inclusive for yeah. foreigners and and LGBTQ as like, well, right? Even for the uh, local people, but uh, for another province, it's like our football team. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. We have, We're gonna have a video soon about the team that me and Gray created in uh, in Chengdu. We have teammates from different countries. Yep. We have a teammate from different pro uh, provinces. Yeah. And we have local Chengdu people. Yeah, it's like, like very mixed and um, multicultural. You know? Inclusive, very yeah. inclusive. Like we have uh, two boys from Tibet. Then we have one boy from Xinjiang. We have uh, people like obviously me and another guy from England. We have people from Ghana. Ghana. We uh, Hungary. People, Hungary. Yeah. People <laughs> from uh, Sichuan province. That's right. As a young Chinese person, like, what's your hope for like China's future? Well, I hope like the restrictions and all the orders regarding to the COVID-19 virus yeah. will go past very soon. Okay. So people can go back to their normal life um, before, like the life they have before the COVID test, uh, COVID stuff. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I hope so too, man. I hope so too. So we can travel more freely, right? We can travel as much as we want. Because we went to Xi'an recently. Yeah, it's a, and it's a really good trip. It's a great trip, yeah. which we posted, you know, some videos about that. You guys check them out if you haven't. But when we came back two days after, Xi'an went into mass lockdown, right? Yeah. So it, it, and then the, the daily COVID tests as well, right? It's just... You start to feel annoying now. Okay. Yeah. So that is number one. What's what's like a, another thing uh, that you know you have a hope for for the future? I hope Chinese people can travel to uh, travel abroad. Yeah. Um, with less uh, paperwork done. Less visa hassle, right? Right. So we can travel like uh, with more easy. Uh, entry to the another man countries Aaron, you know? Aaron would love hearing yeah. you say this man okay that's number two <laughs> is there is there anything else there's another thing what's the last one i hope i can see the chinese football team make the world cup <laughs> once again in my lifetime all right <laughs> bro bro to be honest with you as a foreigner living in china you know because i've lived it for so many years like I would love to see that also. Yeah. You know, and see like, like I remember, because obviously I'm British Greek, when Greece won the Euro, I was in Greece at the time. Everyone was out in the streets celebrating. <laughs> yeah. You know, everyone together, like being proud of, you know, where they're from and, you know, who they are. And I'd love to see China make it to, to like, hopefully the next World Cup. We will be so, we will be so proud and end, yeah. up, with, we'll not, we'll end up crying. Yeah. Know, and just to get, to get the qualification. And they're just, just buying the football jersey yeah. and everything, yeah. right? That would be yeah. cool. That's my childhood memories. We have this all kind of facilities since I was very young. Well, this is your childhood memories. Yeah. Yeah. Did you miss this whilst living in, course, in Canada? Of course. It's our like childhood playground. <laughs> All right, guys, that was it for today. Um, we hope you like this uh, short Q&A with, uh, with my brother Gray. And uh, catch you guys soon. Like, comment, subscribe. Thanks for watching. <laughs> and uh, see you on the next one, guys. Take care. Peace.